Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies, along with some extra goodies. This fly is called a hot ribbed hare's ear. It's kind of a do-all pattern, sort of a nymph, but also a soft tackle, and it works equally well both dead drifted or swung. Begin by inserting the hook point into the small hole of one of the beads. The larger hooks should be paired with the larger beads and the smaller hooks with the smaller beads. Then get the assembly firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. Solder wire is used to add weight and to help stabilize the bead. While holding one end in the fingertips of your left hand, start taking touching wraps around the hook shank with your right. After seven or eight turns, helicopter the wire to break it off close. A small amount of super glue applied to the hook shank between the bead and the wire wraps will lock everything in place once the wire wraps are slid forward and held for a second or two. You can then easily tuck in the tail without the wire wraps spinning around the hook shank. Load a bobbin with a spool of red unithread. Get the thread started on the hook shank behind the wire and take a few wraps rearward before snipping off the tag. Continue taking thread wraps over top of the wire to lock it down further, then create a smooth ramp from the wire down to the hook shank. End with your tying thread at about the hook point. Pick up one of the long brown saddle hackle feathers and pull a dozen or so fibers down perpendicular to the stem. Grip them in the fingertips of your left hand, then gently pull away the feather's stem to strip them free. Ideally, the tips should stay aligned throughout the process. Measure to form a tail, a hook shank in length, then transfer that measurement rearward to the start of the bend. Using the back edge of the wire wraps as a guide, snip the excess butt ends of the hackle fibers off square. You can then take thread wraps rearward to bind the fibers to the top of the hook shank all the way back to the start of the hook bend. End with your tying thread at about the hook point. Snip a four to five inch length of red floss free and anchor one end to the near side of the hook at the back edge of the wire wraps. Allow the floss to be pushed to the far side of the hook as you take wraps rearward to bind it down all the way to the base of the tail. Once again, end with your thread at the hook point. Tease a small amount of brown dubbing free from the packet and use it to create a slender, slightly tapered three inch long dubbing noodle on your tying thread. Start taking wraps with the noodle so the dubbing begins right at the base of the tail then make touching wraps forward to produce a nicely tapered body on the fly. End with your tying thread at the back edge of the bead. Get hold of the red floss and start making open spiral wraps with it over top of the dub body. Four to five turns usually looks pretty good. When you reach your tying thread, use it to firmly anchor the floss and snip the excess off close. Pick up one of the smaller webby feathers and strip off all the lower fuzzy fibers from the stem. Keep stripping off the longer fibers until you reach some that are about the same length as the hook shank. Then, while holding the feather by its very tip, gently preen those lower fibers down to expose the tip. This will allow you to reach in with your tying scissors and snip the tip off to form a small triangular shaped tie-in anchor. Lay the anchor against the near side of the hook and take thread wraps to bind it down really well. Get hold of the feather's stem with hackle pliers, then bend the feather down through the fingertips of your left hand to fold the hackle fibers back on either side of the stem. Start taking touching wraps forward, preening the fibers back as you go. When you reach bare stem, anchor it with tight wraps of tying thread. Once secured, snip the excess stem off close. Pick up your whip finish tool and use it to do a four or five turn whip finish and build up a thin red collar on the fly. Then seat the knot well and snip your tying thread free. A drop of head cement, here Sally Hansen hard as nails, applied to the thread collar will ensure the wraps don't come unraveled. And that's the super tasty looking hot rib hare's ear, ready to fish.